Hi again, this is John Muller with the JP Muller Group. In uh, today's video, we're going to talk about some of the Gantt chart manipulations we can do. So the first thing we want to do is start by uh, how to change the start date. So how does the start date get determined? By default, what the um, Gantt chart will do, you'll start from the Monday or the first starting day um, and you could configure that, we're going to show you in a moment, of uh, the week of the most um, of the first task that appears chronologically. So down here we have a task that starts on 2-7, so it's going to show starting from that week. Okay, We can override this and do it in any number of ways. So first let's talk about those. Um, if we go to the Preferences tab, we're going to talk about the Gantt start date here in column B. Notice it's blank, which means start with a week from the first task, okay, or, or the minimum date task. Let's always start with the current week. So if I put equals today in here, then today's date will always show here. Now this means start that week. So today's the, um, let's say the, zoom in here, the 11th, which happens to be a Saturday, or excuse me, a Sunday. So when I go to the project plan, it's going to start from the previous Monday, right? Because Sunday belongs to this previous Monday, so my week start on Monday. All right, and even though I have a task here that starts before this week, and I forgot where it is, 2.11 here, or excuse me, I forgot where. Anyway, I have a task that starts earlier. It doesn't show because I've restricted the um, plan to show me um, starting from a previous, or excuse me, from the current week. All right, this way by making this preference here of equal to today. No matter when I open the template or the project plan, it will always show the current week. Let's say I want to always show starting at the previous week. I could put equal today minus seven or take a week off. Now my project plan will actually start over here two weeks before. All right, let's take that away. Let's let it figure out when to start on its own. Okay, and now let's change the starting day. So in the previous video, we talked about changing the working day. So let's change the working day to Friday false, Sunday true. So these kind of go hand in hand. For a, let's say a country or a culture where we start our week on a Sunday, right? Sunday would be true. Friday would be false, non-working day. We'd want to adjust the start day of the week to be Sunday. So now when we go to our project plan, you'll notice the first day under the week numbers is Sunday. And we end on a Saturday, Friday and Saturday being weekends. So again, week one says Sunday. Let's go to preferences for a second. Let's change it back to Monday. Make Friday a work day, Sunday not. And let's look at the project plan again. And now you'll notice week one starts on a Monday, ends on a Sunday. Saturday and Sunday are now considered non-working days. All right. That's changing the starting day of the week. Let's change the Gantt chart interval. So when we first open up the template, we show the month, we show the week number, we show the day of the week, and the actual day. We could change these intervals. And we do that again in preferences. And I could say, let's make the Gantt chart, and I don't know why you would do this, let's show only two days at a time. So if I go, you notice it'll go from 2.5 to 2.7 to 2.9. It's very hard to read because sometimes it shows you weekends, sometimes it doesn't. I'm not sure why you'd want to look at it this way, but you can. Um, what you're more likely to do is change it from days to, let's say, weeks. 
Now let's go to our project plan. So a lot of times we want to see a compressed time frame, so we use this, the weeks. So you see, now we no longer show you the day of the week, because it's always the Monday in this case, because I have my start dates as Monday. And I'm going to show you the date, 2-5, 2 226 And it compresses all the Gantt bars to show you what days. Now, why do I still see gray? These are holidays. 219 happens to be President's Day here in the U.S. And again, we see the months. But we don't see anything in the week line because weeks now cover where the days used to cover. So adjust it a little bit here. Okay, let's go back and let's change this back to days. Go back to our project plan, notice again. All right, so we have a finite number of columns right now. So if I go back, it shows a, a few months at a time, about three months or so. And a lot of people have said, well, I want to widen this. Now, what we tried to do, or I tried to do right at the beginning, was kind of lay this out in a way that you might be able to print it on like an 11 by 17, and you could still see everything. And then you could use things like the Gantt start date to manipulate when you start a particular day that you're showing on the Gantt chart so that you can kind of print something that's relative to whatever your kind of meeting or discussion is at the time. So people focus in on the time frame that you're talking about. But with that said, lots of folks still want to, you know, expand it out and see the whole, uh, you know, Gantt chart all on one, or be able to kind of keep scrolling across and see everything. So how do you do that? So right now, notice my Gantt chart goes to 415 here, right? Let's say I want to add more. I don't want to touch the first or second columns, but what I could do basically highlight a bunch of columns right by clicking and holding and then I can right click on the column and put scroll down or right here insert and I could insert 13 to the right and notice what it does it's going to fill in the dates automatically and then when I scroll over all the way over we used to go to 415, but now I'll go all the way to 428 because I added 13 more days, right? 415 plus 13 is 428. I could keep inserting columns. And that's how you do add uh, more columns. Again, do that after the second column here. Do not touch these two columns. Do it after the second column, and you can insert whatever you want. Thanks for uh, tuning in and tune in to the next video to see more about uh, how to manipulate the project plan template functions and features. Thank you.